Exercise. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hello, and welcome back to the Prison Officer Podcast. Uh, this is another episode of The Basics, where I try to talk a little bit about the, I guess I'm going to use the word trade craft that correctional officers need. You know, how we do our jobs, what the uh, the basic knowledge base that's needed by a correctional officer, uh, whether that be rookie or veteran. You know, there's certain things that we need to do in all jails and all prisons in order to keep them safe and sanitary. And I think one of those that, especially when we talk about sanitation, is inmate property. And that's what I'm going to cover now is inmate property and how we control it, how we deal with it, what uh, maybe a little bit of what some of their rights are with property. Let's get into this. Why, why does property matter? Well, property matters because of several reasons. One, fire hazards, sanitation, of course. I mean, if you get a cell full of cardboard, our concrete cells are made to withstand certain fires and they won't spread. That's the way most prisons are built. But if you get enough stuff in there, if you get enough cardboard to where you could actually ignite a lot of the rest of what's in there, you could, in theory... Uh, start a fire big enough to to go through that concrete to spread to other cells. There's a fire hazard there. Sanitation's another one. Uh, any place that you've got extra clothes, extra cardboard, extra whatever it is, old food, trash uh, shoved up under those bunks, then you've got a problem with possibly vermin or insects, uh, bugs, that type of stuff, even molds and um, the stuff that builds up like that that's unhealthy for us inside our inside our uh, prisons and jails. But I think one of the reasons that I look to inmate property control is some of the escapes that I've seen and heard about over the years uh, can be directly related to the amount of property those inmates had in their cell. You know, one of those was uh, with the Bureau of Prisons, MCC Chicago. You had uh, a couple of inmates who managed to get through a window. They had enough bed sheets, it seems to me, and don't quote me exactly, but there was 30-plus bed sheets that they were able to tie together, shimmy down the outside of the building, and escape for a while. Elmira, New York, the escape up there is another example of, of poor property control. Those inmates had managed to get a six-pound sledgehammer head back to their cell, uh, which is what they used to uh, beat through the concrete and affect their escape. Uh, They had black paint that they'd gotten in their cell where they were able to paint the inside of that cell dark so staff couldn't tell that they were, you know, uh, working on the walls and, and how much stuff they had in their cell. They were also able to get other materials for uh, building the mannequins, you know, paper mache type stuff, uh, flesh colored paint. They were able to keep extra hair. All of this comes back to two things. One is good cell searches. Okay. And the other one is inmate property. And, and while we're doing those cell searches to ensure that inmates are staying within those property limits and that they don't have extra contraband or, or things that could turn into contraband. One of the things I did with the rookie classes when I taught them, I, I had a board that had a bunch of uh, shanks on it. So I made up this little worksheet that said, is this contraband, yes or no? Had things on there like a, a plastic spork, a rubber band, a Band-Aid, a paper clip, you know, an ink pen, different things like that. Are these contraband? And so I'd pass that out to the class and they'd check yes or no. And then we'd get done. I would open up that board that we had made that had all of these different 20 or 30 shanks that had been found inside the prison. Everything on that list could be found somewhere on one of those shanks. So is everything contraband? No, but some things can be turned into contraband. Just things like that, you know, paper clips, ink pens. Those are things they can build tattoo guns with. So these are all things that we want to uh, minimize, pay attention to, and take from the inmates when they're not allowed to have them. Now, with that said, inmates are allowed to have certain property. And somewhere in your policies, I would expect that you've got limits on what inmates can have. 
And let's talk about that for a minute because I've seen the people who don't enforce any limits and then I've seen the people who have zero tolerance. And somewhere in between is where a reasonable officer is going to find balance. Okay. So I go into an inmate cell who is dirty and there's, um, there's extra cardboard, there's trash. He doesn't clean. He's got stuff everywhere. He's got pictures on the walls. Um, am I going to take him down to the property limits? Absolutely. If he can't keep a clean cell, if he can't take care of what he's got, then he doesn't need any more. So I'm going to take him down to the exact limits of what policy allows. Now, with that said, I go into another cell. I've got an inmate who does what he's supposed to. Everything's clean in there. He's got things put away in, uh, in his locker. And I see that he's got 27 personal photos and he's only allowed 25. I'm not going to, I'm not going to step in and take two photos there. That, that's not where I need to put my efforts. There's plenty of other inmates who have too much contraband property who are doing things that need my attention more, I guess, is the way I'll say it. So even though there's limits, there there is common sense. There is what a reasonable officer would do. So when I go into a cell, what am I looking for? Well, the first thing you're always going to look for, I'm looking for hard contraband, right? That's always on the back of my mind. Uh, if I can get, you know, shanks, hooch, drugs, tattoo guns, that type of stuff out of the cell, that's my first priority. But I also want to get rid of excess property. So I'm going to look around, you know, does this inmate have more pillows than he's allowed? Is he double stacking, triple stacking mattresses? I'm going to get that next. Um, I'm going to go through their locker. I want to see how much food is in there. And there's a couple of reasons for that. You might think, well, he bought that at the commissary. He's allowed to have as much food as he can buy at the commissary. Not necessarily true. In some of our prison systems, you'll see inmates stock up if they know that there's a disturbance coming. If inmates are unsettled and they're talking about, you know, causing a disturbance and these inmates know they're going to get locked down, you'll see inmates who are stocking up food. So that's going to be a clue that I want to look into further. Why does this inmate have so much food? The other thing is a lot of newer staff, they understand, you know, if you see oranges stuffed into a cell that they've snuck back from food service, um, that these can be turned into hooch. But a lot of the things they can buy from commissary often can be put into hooch. Things like Twinkies, a lot of sugar, got some yeast in them. Um, They can buy a lot of bread products like that, which can go into hooch. Some places they can still buy certain fruit, applesauce, different things like that from the commissary. And even though it's in small quantities, Sure, they can't make uh, much hooch out of a packet of applesauce, but if they've stocked that up to where they've got 15 or 20 packets, then absolutely we need to get in there and and get them back down to those property limits. Another thing I want to look at is uh, hobby craft. It seems like inmates that have hobby craft, whether I've seen crocheting, I've seen artwork, I've seen colored pencils, I've seen charcoal uh, that they can draw with. All of this stuff in enough quantity can become contraband. It's something that we need to monitor. Have they got three or four paintbrushes in there? Those things have always unnerved me a little bit. You have a, you know, a six or an eight inch piece of wood in the cell and some of them have six or eight of those or so hobby craft something that I'm always, I guess, a little nervous about because it's given so liberally in some places, um, And I've heard staff say, well, that's nothing I ever have to worry about. They're afraid to lose that. I'm going to disagree. They might be afraid to lose it just in the general uh, run of the day. But when push comes to shove, any of that stuff can become contraband. And you've got an inmate that's got five or six, you know, eight inch long paintbrushes that are made out of wood and the handles are made out of wood. Those can easily become shanks. If they decide that today's the day and, you know, they don't want to live anymore or they want to fight a CO, um, we have to monitor the, even the hobby craft stuff, um, personal, personal property that they have, maybe their artwork, maybe photos from home. The thing I'll say about that, yes, there's limits and I will enforce those limits within reason, but you do have to be careful with these items. I don't know how many use of forces, 
uh, how many assaults I've seen over the years that come down to something personal that an inmate felt very strongly about. It doesn't mean you can't take it, but you need to take it in the right way. You may have to spend a little bit more time explaining it to them. Uh, make sure that you document it correctly, that it goes to wherever your property room is for the proper disposal. In some areas, that's going to be, it's going to get placed in the trash for disposal. Uh, in some instances, they may be able to send some of those things home. So check with your policies and do that the right way when you're handling those personal property items. Another thing that, of course, this, this is the bane of all of us, uh, is legal work. It's hard to put limits on legal work. We get to the point where I've seen people treat legal work as hands off. And legal work is not hands off. You can't sit down and, and read their legal work and go through it page by page, reading what they've written and what they're filing and all that type of stuff. But those boxes, those, those folders of legal work, you can absolutely go through them to see if there's anything else in there that's not allowed. Are they hiding contraband in the pages of their legal work? And if they are, well, now this, this has become searchable. Make sure you do it the right way. Make sure you follow the policies of your institution. But once you find contraband in there, you should be able to go ahead and search the rest of that legal work. If you've got legal work that's built up to a level that it's uh, not manageable, then you need to take that to your administration. Don't take that on your own to take it out of there or dispose of it or anything like that. Take it to your administration and let them know that it's a... Uh, it's at a level that's not manageable for the housing unit. There's several things that the admin can do. They may be able to put some of that legal work in storage for them, for the inmate. Um, they may be able to get uh, the departmental lawyers involved to see exactly what they do need. Don't do that on your own because it's filled with liability for you when you do mess with their legal work. But that does not mean that legal work is hands off. So that kind of covers the basics of inmate property. I do look at it as, as one of the most important things that an officer does during their day. If your housing unit, if you have limited the property, you have limited an inmate's ability to have, hold, and make contraband. You have made your housing unit more sanitary and safer for everybody that's in that housing unit. Uh, so it's a very important thing. This is my own little personal rule that I have. When I do a cell search, I never come out of a cell with nothing. And I've seen that over the years. Everybody's probably got a log book so that you can prove uh, when you did a cell search and what you took out of those uh, cells. And I'll go through there and it'll say, Officer so-and-so, cell 366, nothing found. I challenge you to ever go in an inmate cell and not find contraband. I personally, after 30 years of doing this, have never seen an inmate cell that didn't contain some form of contraband or some form of excess property. So I challenge you when you get back to your institution, when you do those cell searches, that you go in there and you come out with something every time. Doesn't mean it has to be a, a shank. Sometimes it can be excess clothing. Sometimes it can be excess commissary. Sometimes it can be four extra apples that they had snuck back from food service. But whatever it is, you should come out of that cell with something. And that's part of the daily process. If we do that daily, you're going to have a much safer housing unit. You're going to have improved sanitation. You're going to have inmates who know that you care about what you're doing in that housing unit and that they can't just get away with anything. You're going to kind of hold them to the line. So that's today's episode on the inmate property. I hope you enjoy these episodes of the basics and I will see you for the next one. Exercise. Have a great day. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three.